You may have heard Tucker Carlson the other night talking about NYU's farce of a study on big tech censorship of conservatives. On his opinion piece for Fox News, it says billionaires fund their own studies and they get the conclusions they pay for. A study came out by NYU claiming that conservative censorship doesn't exist. There's no evidence, which is an outrageous lie. I say it every time I talk about censorship. Gizmodo, not a right wing publication, first broke the news that employees at Facebook were deleting trending conservative stories from their news trending tab. That's a fact. And from that, it's only gotten worse. And more importantly, as most of you know, I'm sure because people kind of bring it up all the time. I was on the Joe Rogan podcast with Jack Dorsey and Vijay Agade some time ago. And ultimately, when I called them out for pointing out their definitive bias, which is clear as day and exists, the response was, thanks for the feedback. To put it simply, there is absolutely censorship of conservatives predominantly. But censorship goes further than just conservatives, my friends. They are going after the anti-establishment individuals. Now, for the past several years, this was typically the conservatives who were challenging the media and the, and the cultural institutions. That's who's getting banned. To simplify my Jack Dorsey, you know, uh, Joe Rogan episode, the misgendering policy on Twitter is of a very narrow left-wing dogmatic perspective that most people in this country don't agree with. Conservatives are the ones who speak out against it, and thus they're the ones who end up getting banned. The defense I hear from the left is, so you think conservatives should have the right to misgender people? No, I'm saying conservatives don't agree with your perspective on what misgendering is. It's not, it's not a, uh, I'm not condoning or condemning. I'm just pointing out you have 75 million people, I'd suppose, or more, who think your rule makes no sense. Thus, your platform's biased. Now, Tucker Carlson calls this out because it's BS. But the big news here is actually Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring war on big tech cartels, says he will protect politicians from being banned with a $100,000 a day fine for companies that exclude candidates. My friends, you want to know how someone's honest? They're agreeing with this. You can be on the left, the right, up, down, left, whatever, religious, not religious. Recognizing what Ron DeSantis is saying is very important. He's saying we don't want Mark Zuckerberg promoting politicians or blocking them. For the longest time, we've heard from the left that Facebook's algorithms are promoting conservatives. We see it all the time from these personalities. They put out this list of the top 10 stories on Facebook this week. And it's all Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro, Fox News, Ben Shapiro, Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson. And they complain about it. Okay, well, if as a people want to share, that's what they want to share, right? How about this? As Ron DeSantis proposes, one of the things he says, you can opt out of the algorithm. I'm just like, yes, brother, preach. Absolutely. Censorship is a very serious and real problem. And I am extremely impressed with what Ron DeSantis has proposed here. And I think it makes a lot of sense. And I agree with it. But let me read the story for you to break down what's exactly going on. They say, Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis has declared war on big tech cartels, proposing a new law targeting firms who deplatform candidates for office. Now, before I read, I want to point out Laura Loomer. Most I think most people know who she is. She's a very prominent and I don't know, I don't know what the right way to describe what Laura Loomer is. She's very good at generating press for herself. She's very controversial and she was running for office in Florida, but she was banned from social media. I believe she sued for this, but there was an argument that by Twitter banning her, but not her opponent, they were essentially giving free public platforming, which is akin to running ads to her opponent, which may have hurt her. Now, Laura won the primary and ultimately lost the race. But the big challenge here was whether or not she had a right to be a verified user on Twitter running for political office. Under Ron DeSantis' new rules, she would be. Here's what he says. Here's the story. In a press conference on Tuesday, DeSantis issued a series of recommendations that are expected to be included in the legislation this year as the Transparency in Technology Act announced on the same day. Quote, today they may come after someone who looks like me. Tomorrow they may come after someone who looks like you. DeSantis warned towards the end of his address to reporters at the state capitol during which it could aim at big tech companies. DeSantis said that Florida would fine social media firms like Facebook and Twitter $100,000 per day if they ban any candidate running for elected office in the state. The Republicans' proposed legislation would also require firms to give notice 
of changes in the terms of service, allow people to opt out of content algorithms and create a cause of action pathway for legal action against tech firms. Florida's proposed Transparency Technology Act aims to protect privacy from the expanding powers of big tech firms because the system is rigged, he claimed, and it is. Twitter, Facebook, and other similar platforms have changed from neutral platforms to enforcers of preferred narratives. DeSantis said, adding, I'm committed to addressing what may be one of the most pervasive threats to American self-government in the 21st century. Now, you may be thinking to yourself that he's certainly wrong. Ron DeSantis is incorrect. And this is just conservatives whining. My friends, I would like to introduce you to Graham Elwood. Graham Elwood tweeted, well, YouTube censorship has hit me again, this time really hard. Was it the JFK talk with Lee Camp or calling out people with Epstein ties? Anyway, America is not a democracy and hasn't been one for decades. Here, here, good sir. Graham Elwood is a progressive but he's challenging the establishment. My response was soon YouTube will have to change its name to Tube. The only thing left will be mainstream personalities. And I want to show you what this is really about. Ron DeSantis said they are, it's, it's about the narrative. It's not necessarily about conservative. Conservatives are the ones who are predominantly getting you know, smacked down and getting censored. Why? Because they're the ones challenging the cultural establishment. But there are many leftists who do it as well. Notably, Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, for instance. And there are certainly many personalities who just kind of skirt around it or toe the line on YouTube, as it were. But there is a preferred narrative. They want a unified narrative that they control, the establishment elites, the corporate media overlords, all these people. And I've met some of these people. They want to be able to unify everything into a single, easy to condense message. They want control of the media back. I want to show you why I think Graham Elwood got. Well, well, so let, let, let me show you. They say your channel is no longer eligible to monetize. They took his money away. I'll tell you why. In my opinion, take a look at Graham's YouTube channel. Look what we got here. He's got 76,000 subscribers. He is a progressive political commentary with live streams five days a week. Let's see. What was his last video? Hundreds deported under Biden, including witness. Okay. All right. Critical of Joe Biden. Critical of deportation, right? Uh, Presumably. Presumably. I'm not watching the video. Yes. Graham is a progressive but he's criticizing Biden. Ignoring Biden's mental decline is bad for democracy. I completely agree. Here's another one. The same thing. Ignoring it, better democracy. How about this JFK assassination video? Life is very hard for billionaires. Janet Yellen paid 801,000 by the firm paying Robin Hood. $60 billion housing grab by Wall Street. Firing union workers. Has Twitter, censor, Twitter censorship gone too far? Does Twitter have the right to block people? Wall Street gets owned by GameStop buyers. There it is. Now, you can clearly see that Graham Elwood is progressive, but he has every right to run his business, provide his commentary. And I don't even find it to be that controversial. Like, I, I, look, talking about the JFK assassination, that's like ancient aliens and history channel stuff. What about his channel has become so offensive they've stripped away his right to monetize? Well, I'll tell you what I think is going on. They don't want small creators the ability to rise up and gain prominence. A couple of years ago, they altered the algorithm to make sure people like me don't succeed. No joke. They tried. I guess I broke through. Uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will add that I, there are some people who helped boost um, you know, my, my reach, notably Steven Crowder and Joe Rogan having me on their shows. And I actually went on Jimmy Dore's show as well. That probably gave me enough reach to where it became very difficult for YouTube to censor. I talk about some of these similar things. Joe Biden's declining mental health and Wall Street. Why are they taking down a progressive? Ron DeSantis is right. It's, but it's not just about conservatives. It's about those who would, cha- who would challenge the establishment narrative. Which brings me to the most important point I can do in this segment. Go to TimCast.com, become a member, because I just showed you what Graham was talking about. He should have his channel fully reinstated. I think it's complete BS they took him down. And it seems like we talk about similar things, granted from different political opinions for the most part. In fact, I'd probably just argue my political opinions aren't that strong. And I actually agree with a lot of things to bring up Joe Biden's mental health, Wall Street. That's why we set up TimCast.com, because I think we're on the chopping block next. Now, if you become a member, we've got a bunch of members only content. We're expanding. And we recently last night did a full bonus episode, an hour long discussion of Netflix claiming proof of life after death. Exorcisms, exorcisms are on the rise. It's kind of creepy stuff. Huh? It's crazy. And we talk about God and religion. And uh, full disclosure, there are no atheists in the room. Uh, I I guess maybe Ian, but uh, it was an interesting discussion. 
This is set up specifically because of what's happening to other YouTubers and people like Graham. So I, I'll tell you this. I can't get uh, Graham his, 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 his uh, partner program monetization back, but y'all can check out his content. Seems like there's an overlap between what we're concerned about, anti-establishment. So Ron DeSantis made a very correct point. It's about those who support the preferred narratives and those who go against it. Jimmy Dore, Graham, they're against the preferred narrative. People like me, Steven Crowder, absolutely against it. They tried going after Ben Shapiro, but Ben Shapiro, Crowder, they're way too prominent. They can't do anything about it. Graham, on the other hand, 76,000 subs. It's a big channel. It's, it's you know, relative to the average person, but not big enough to generate enough press to stop the censorship. Now, I want to show you what Ron DeSantis is proposing. His comments come weeks after former President Donald Trump was banned from Twitter. This we know. After the ban, many of Trump's supporters moved on to Parler, a right-leaning competitor to Twitter, which was later shut down by Amazon Web Services and removed from the smartphone application stores of Google and Apple. How insane is this? They destroyed a business. For what? 60 people posted nasty things. It was against the rules of Parler in the first place. Parler was banning these people. I guess Amazon said they didn't do it fast enough. Here are some messages they didn't remove. But were they removing them, removing them when they were reported or requested? You see, there's the big challenge. And this is the defense Jack Dorsey used. When I brought up, look at all these things that aren't, that aren't getting banned. Look at Antifa organizing these violent riots and calling people to show up and, and bring weapons and all that stuff. And he goes, well, if it's not reported to us, we can't. No, 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 that's a lie. That was his defense. It's, it's got to be reported to us. There was one post we brought up on the show where you could see this one tweet talking about getting violent had a whole bunch of responses that were banned. But the main thread, the, the initial tweet wasn't. It was like, this one has been removed. This one has been removed, removed for violation. And I'm like, so clearly people are reporting this. I have people telling me that they reported it. Dozens of people reported it and you didn't remove it. Why? Because the game is rigged, my friends. They needed Antifa. They liked what Antifa was doing. It was destabilizing. You see, all of these bad things were happening under Trump because they wanted to blame Trump for it. Now, where are we at? Now they don't like Antifa. Now they're arresting them. Now they're smearing them. Now they're, now they're starting to ban them from Twitter. No joke. They're starting to ban Antifa from Twitter. Well, I'll tell you this. If you go on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, call, organize, or incite violence, I'm not going to defend you. I'm going to say good riddance. Those things are not legal. You can't, that's not free speech. Telling someone how to commit a crime, where, you know, where and when to do it, and, and just to do it, that is not expressing yourself. Expressing yourself is saying like, I don't like this and I don't like that. But let me make one thing clear. Twitter doesn't ban hate speech. Twitter bans the hate speech against people they choose. Diversity and inclusion does not mean inclusion of everyone. They're very clearly people of varying identi- I- I- uh, um, identifying features or characteristics that will not be protected and will be uh, uh, absolutely shut down. You can go on Twitter and find racial slurs like crazy. Now, obviously, I know the left is going to be like, Tim's talking about reverse racism. No, I'm not. I'm talking about racism against Asian people. <laughs> I know I bring up the, the, the racism against Asian people. And a lot of white people are like, yeah, but there's racism against white people, too. And I'm like, you're right. Absolutely. The left is changing the definition. Twitter says you can't disparage people on the basis of race, right? Well, when you try and bring up the fact that people post all these nasty things about white people all day and night, I think it's wrong. Twitter doesn't do anything about it because... It doesn't, it's, well, their narrative is that, but privilege and power. Okay, Asian people, they're, they're a much smaller minority in this country than the black community and the the Latino community. Why is it, why are people allowed to disparage them? No joke. Why are they allowed? Uh Uh-oh, that one doesn't fit their narrative. That's why I bring it up. And don't get me started on mixed race people. Twitter absolutely allows the most insane and disgusting comments. What they really don't want is for you to challenge their narrative. That's what it's all about. Check us out. They say Transparency and Technology Act. We cannot allow big tech companies to operate in darkness while manipulating social media, a kind of 21st century public square. Here, here. The bill protects users by giving them the power to opt out of post promoting and shadow banning algorithms. Dude, shouldn't everyone be cheering for this? The left? You don't want Ben Shapiro leftists on the front page of Facebook for everybody. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you love it? This is not about this is not about politicians yet. They have a politicians section. No, no. This is about people saying like, yeah, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see the promotion of this content. Wouldn't that be great? Stops frequent changes to terms of use and requiring communication and consent for terms of use changes. That sounds like something good, right? Don't you want the people to have the power and not the corporations? 
requires large scale social media companies to notify users when 30 days if they are censored or deplatformed. The bill creates enforcement tools by letting users sue social media platforms if they don't consistently apply their standards or don't give required notice. I've heard a million and one times the left says conservatives are actually being benefited by these platforms. And again, they reference that list of like the top shared posts from Ben Shapiro and, you know, the Daily Wire, etc. OK, wouldn't you like to see a report, a notice explaining their standards and why that is? We should be in agreement on this one. Giving the Florida attorney general tools to combat big tech anti-competitive practices. The bill holds social media companies accountable by stopping them from arbitrarily censoring and deplatforming users requiring them to publish and consistently apply standards for users censoring, shadow banning, and deplatforming. And it protects political candidates by exempting any post by or about a candidate from being promoted or shadow banned during an election, requiring the Elections Commission to fine a social media platform for deplatforming a political candidate seeking office in Florida, starting on the date of qualification through the election. I agree with it. Because I believe in free speech, and I don't believe that Jack Dorsey and Vijaya Gade should have the right to tell you what you are or, or, or not allowed to hear in terms of political opinion. Right now, as I've shown you, Graham Elwood, a progressive challenging deportation, Joe Biden and Wall Street banks is being deplatformed. They're not doing it outright. They stripped away his monetization. Now, to be fair, I don't believe monetization is a right. You, you know, YouTube acting as an ad sales agency is like, that's them doing, you know, doing you a solid, okay? He's not been banned or removed, but you can see how this negatively impacts his channel. The point is, when you get people who are challenging Wall Street and YouTube says, we can't allow this, we need to take away their ability to function, to work, and to monetize, and that's, a, that's, that's something they grant to many other people, especially in politics, you can see the problem. I don't believe everyone has a right to monetization, but I do believe that if YouTube is going to grant monetization to the likes of me or, say, David Pakman, then certainly Graham should have the right to monetize as well. And so should Luke Rudkowski if We Are Changed. YouTube is playing favorites by granting monetary access to me and, say, David Pakman, because, you know, I, I reference David just because he's more of a, a, you know, left Democrat kind of personality, traditional liberal. They're saying these are the opinions we allow on this platform. They, when they, when they, when they take down Graham and say, we, you know, we are changed, Luke Rutkowski, they're saying these opinions will struggle to succeed. We can't have that. So I think we absolutely need to, to protect individuals in this capacity. And I'll tell you one thing. Now's the time for conservatives, people like Tucker Carlson, Ron DeSantis, to look to the progressive personalities who have been banned because many have been. And I'm not, I'm not talking about Antifa. I'm not talking about people who get violent. I'm talking about people like, you know, Graham Elwood, who's had his monetization stripped for what? Seriously, for what? That's what, what needs to, we, we need to make sure it doesn't happen. But I'll tell you, the establishment, in my opinion, is working overtime because what they really don't want is the populist message, which is why, well, David Pakman's doing really, really well. He, he, he runs a very traditional, uh, you know, Democrat liberal line. It's his opinions. He's, he's entitled to do so. And it plays really well. The reason it plays really well. Well, for one, David's really good at what he does. Full respect. But it's safe. It's safe for YouTube and it's safe for the establishment machine. I'm not trying to disparage David in any way. I'm just saying some people have opinions that they, they like. My opinions are pretty tepid most of the time and it's safe. Ben Shapiro, his opinions can get a little controversial, but he's still fairly safe. Crowder, well, Crowder's demeanor, his comedy can offend many people. So YouTube's been kind of freaking out, but still relatively safe. Graham Elwood, a progressive challenging the machine in Wall Street and Joe Biden's mental health. He is a progressive left wing populist type. Now they can't have the rabble watching this stuff and sort of, you know, rising up. And more importantly, that's why I've been stressing TimCast.com membership, because it's only a matter of time before they say, Tim's, I'm doing, Tim's doing the same thing. I have been hammering away at the GameStop rebellion story as a real opportunity to strip value from Wall Street and give it back to the working class. They cannot have that. No, they need me talking culture war. They prefer it when Tim Pool says, orange man's not that bad. Let's argue with each other and in in, in, in each other's tribes. Well, now we have some kind of unity and I want more of it. I don't want to be sitting here complaining about AOC and saying how bad she is. I, I do think there's issues with her, but I tried. I'm trying to I'm trying to pull that back a little bit because I need AOC to rally the people who support her to go after the big tech corporations and Wall Street who are even shutting down progressives. That's what we need to talk about. 
<laughs> just by saying that, I'm like, oh, man, they are going to ban me for sure. I don't know. It might be difficult, though. I don't talk about crazy, you know, conspiracy stuff for the most part. It's pretty run of the mill news commentary, but I am starting to hit them in a sore spot. So I do think it's only a matter of time. I mentioned it before. Facebook has effectively shut down my page. They shut it down. They, they, uh, they, they've booted me from monetization for no reason, simply for covering what happened at the Capitol. And I didn't say it was good or bad. I said, here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. Wow, this is crazy. And that was it. They didn't give me any real reason why, why it broke any rules. It didn't. They didn't tell me, hey, in the future, you, should, you, you can't post this stuff. Didn't say anything. They just nuked my channel, nuked my page. It's gone. I don't care for Facebook anyway. But it's entirely possible YouTube will do the same thing at some point, and we must be aware of it. So again, Tucker Carlson roasts this NYU farce of a study on big tech censorship of conservatives. And I'll tell you what the game is, all right? They are overwhelmingly banning conservatives. But what they're saying is we're not banning conservatives. We're banning people who defy the narrative. It just so happens that's mostly conservatives. You see how the game works? So this report can come out and say the largest group of people who got banned were those who challenged the establishment. Then they fail to tell you that we can see it's mostly conservatives. But we need to make sure that we're, you know, talking with progressives, moderates, and conservatives about those that are being shut down and why they're being shut down. And the reason I put emphasis on Graham's channel is because he's not a conservative. The real issue here, as Ron DeSantis pointed out, whether the progressives like the guy or not, is that it's about the preferred narrative. That's what we're fighting. Do you have a right to express yourself, to challenge Joe Biden and Wall Street and the lobbyists and the war machine? Because if the big tech companies have their way, the answer is no. And now that Trump is out and Biden is in, and many of these populist and progressive leftists are pointing the finger at Joe Biden, just you wait. They're going to start getting nuked one by one. Now, most of the conservative figures are gone. They banned like Milo and they banned Alex Jones, Laura Loomer. But what about the left personalities? They're going to start bringing them, you know, getting rid of them next. They needed to get rid of those who supported Trump because they helped Trump win. But they needed the support of the progressives who were cheering on Joe Biden. Now that these people are now targeting Joe Biden, they're next. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.